try to teach and this is the sake of it. Now there are two challenges here. See, we also run a lot of institutions in Manipal. Here, one is the, uh, the motivation, the attitude of the teacher. Does, does she have that inbuilt? Or should it be given that doses have to be given to these teachers? Right? Every woman in the should have that. So until and unless that doesn't happen, it's very difficult to implement a proper lesson plan. Okay. Um, I have, as far as I have seen, the teacher who has got the drive, the teacher who has that passion, goes beyond to create the lesson plan. And the teacher who doesn't have, we can easily make out that it's it's nowhere there. It's just for the sake of writing what they do here, what they design the lesson plan is completely different from what they go into. So the first thing that I always uh, tell you as the heads of institutions is please, if you are creating a lesson plan, be, be clear that whom are you giving this, whom are you assigning this task. Uh, until and unless that teacher is not very well, that it's not the question here, okay, experience does matter, but the, the biggest part here is do they have that uh, uh, that excitement, do they have that uh, 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 passion to, take this, to, to really do well? So it same applies even for the, for the students as well. Uh, if you really see, if you take it further, the student who loves to learn, who loves to really do excel, he comes out and who doesn't will always be lower in his score. Same thing applies for a teacher as well. So that's the first prerequisite that I always say before even planning, before even trying to prepare. The secondly is the classroom management. Even before I come to the lesson plans, what is the kind of classroom management that is there? Are the, how do you manage the discipline in the class? Do you have a proper SOPs again? See, standard operating processes are very, very important. I keep repeating that again and again in my uh, sessions, even in the second half. Do you have the rules and regulations? So what, what, how to conduct the, 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 if, if a child is in the class? Is it being told to the child? So when, when, a, when a teacher walks in, I mean, if it is an Islamic school, do they have to stand up and do they have to, uh, you know, they, 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 they have to say salam alaikum, do they have to do? So, and after the teacher starts the session, what is the, how do they have to perform themselves as a student? So these are, there are well, well, you should have the well laid out routines, okay, well laid out rules, has to be important, communicated to the student. What is the environment the, the class has? Is it spacious enough or is it too congested? How is the seating arrangement? Is the seating arrangement, if you are giving a lecture, is it like a classroom style or if it is an activity you are conducting, do you have a different process? Do you change? How often do you change? Is it required? <coughs> uh, one is the seating arrangement and even the, <coughs> the, the students who are sitting there, do you, do you change it too often? Is, is it the part of your system? Do they have to lose their ownership every <clears throat> every time? So even even to a student, when they go and sit in a place, they, they start taking that as an ownership. Okay, and the biggest punishment you could do is if if you really want to is ask him to change. So, but if you frequently start changing the students, you know, from one uh, desk to another one chair, so they lose out on that, and no more your your punishments will justify what you do. Then comes the, uh, uh, how are you building your uh, student self-esteem, then uh, learning environment, how, how uh, in, in, the, in the ways of, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the type, in the, uh, is it very well lit? Uh, is there any noise outside? So these are, couple of very basic things, you know, for your lesson plans to be effective. If this, if the child, the student, the learner himself is not very uh, comfortable, then any type of lesson plan will be a big failure. Before even uh, the, the teacher gets into a classroom, uh, do you have any good training for her how to have that classroom management skills? Do you, do, do you train that particular teacher, or all, all your teachers in, in total, and what are the do's and don'ts. I'll just list out a few for your references. Uh, do's could be like uh, how to increase the self-esteem, you know, using praise and encouragement to a student. Uh, how you uh, help the teacher to know, to show your student that you care about them. Uh, how you will make a 
student be a role model. So the role modeling is very key here. Um, it, it's, it's very important. Uh, I was, I was, you know, okay, I was in Delhi the other, the last week and one of the uh, books that we are publishing is, uh, is a very big author in uh, IIT. So he's a maths lecturer, very famous uh, maths lecturer, and we, the book said only because of his name, the name of the textbook. So we were talking, he said, you know, uh, Sammy, why I learned, I, I made my career in maths, it was because of that, but he's a non-Muslim, so he said, because of that one guru in my life in 8th standard. So he was a maths teacher, and the way he used to write, the, solve the, uh, the questions, you know, the problems, was so neat and was so easy. Uh, my other section, that teacher used to solve five, six uh, problems, and this particular math teacher used to only solve one. And with that one, we could go back home and solve all other questions. Okay, so that particular teacher made a remarkable thing in my mind, and I decided I started loving maths and I became a professor in maths. So that, that's a role model. Role model is, can a child inspire, sorry, a teacher inspire the child? Can the child get an inspiration from the, from the, um, from the teacher? Can, and, and as, let me also tell you, there was a research done, um, of course it was in UK, but it also applies in India. <clears throat> every, every person, if they like or dislike a student, a, a subject, it has always been a teacher behind it. Okay, if he dislikes one particular subject, majority of the time it does. It's actually he's disliked that teacher. And if a teacher, has, if, if a child has um, is doing very well in that subject, likes that subject, it has some some teacher has made a mark in his mind. So these are all the things that are very important for a teacher, uh, even before getting into the into the class. Okay, then. How, how they have to emphasize a point, how they have to conduct, what are the, uh, how to start a day, how not, how to behave, how to find out the intervention programs. So there are certain tools, a list of tools that you need to have properly trained out to your staff. And there are also a list of don'ts like always insisting that your the teacher is always right or always being critical, yelling, being sarcastic. Uh, you know, comparing students to other students or siblings. So these are some some don'ts that always we need to keep track of. Okay. Coming back to lesson planning. What's lesson planning? I know all of you are. What, what is actually lesson planning? It is just a document where you are supposed to write down in in bullet points. This is what we are going to do. Or is it a is a complete document for that whole class? So we need to have the definition right. It's, it's like a surgeon. If a surgeon is going to operation theater, he has to get all his tools right. Not one missing in the operation theater, okay? If he has to have that uh, surgical uh, scissors, if he has to have that stapler, if he has to have that uh, uh, rulers, injections, everything. Everything should be available in the operation theater. If it is not, then and you cannot go into the operation and start struggling and start locating for things. This, this what is, is, is a tool. So lesson plan is a tool where a, a teacher takes it to the class and everything is available. If, if the lesson plan says these are the education aids, these are all the uh, requirements, these are all the resources that are there, uh, it has to be laid out in the lesson plan. That these, are, these are the prerequisite even before, before you go. So it's, it's ultimately, uh, is a process, lesson plan is a process uh, of organizing the activities required to achieve the desired learning outcome. I'll come to the learning outcome once what exactly it is the later. But this is the real definition of a lesson plan. Now things could go wrong in many ways uh, while, while designing a lesson plan. The first and foremost is the learning objective, okay? How are you defining the learning objective? Well, what, is, what is learning objective, first of all, before even you start? So that, that's the basis on which the whole lesson plan is made. So is it derived out of any, any um, taxonomies? Is it derived? Uh, so that, you know, I, I go to a lot of schools, I see a lot of lesson plans, and for me, it just takes two minutes to find out whether the whole system is running well in that school or not. Or is it just a lesson plan A? 
or is it implementable? Is it getting implemented? Is it enough to implement? Okay, just take two minutes. If 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 you are if your whole school is running, the whole process, the whole system is running on the lesson plan, you will easily come to know. Okay? Now, what, what's learning? Before even we go to learning object, what exactly, exactly is learning? What is learning? I mean, we have, our students come to our school, they have to learn, uh, they acquire knowledge, and uh, they implement. Okay? So it's, it's ultimately the skills that they have to do for their problem solving. So any problem they, they come in their life, anything that they have, uh, will they be able to do? That's learning. So you are giving them a, uh, you are giving them that uh, uh, knowledge, that skills, uh, which will help them for them for their future. So that's exactly is what is learning. And objective is how to achieve anything. I'm, I'm not talking about learning. A, a definition of an objective. It's, Achieving anything in a time frame uh, with with whatever resources is available to you. So just clubbing these two gives you an answer of a learning objective. So your goal, your aim has to be very clear even if you before start. If that is not correct, that's the first mistake you are doing. Like the entire other all parameters will go wrong. So learning objective is the key. Uh, what topic are you teaching in the next? Uh, uh, if it is a 40 minutes class, what what topic are you covering? What is the content? Uh, how are you going to do it? Is it totally activity based or is it lecture based? What are the learning strategies that you are based? Keeping all this in mind, you need to derive a good uh, learning objective. If your learning objective is not right, then the whole system, whole process is wrong. Next comes the procedures. Next comes the elaboration of what you are actually going to do. So that 40 minutes that you are covering, is that your detail, your procedure, does it cover, gets enough within 40 minutes or is it lesson or is it beyond that so you need to take care of that so this is the second mistake if if your if your teacher who is designing a lesson plan doesn't take care of this uh, whole description that they are going to deploy so that's the second mistake that happens in the lesson plan okay so it has to be very clearly laid out uh, what they are going to do um, more also more importantly here there is a uh, what is the child behavior taxonomies or strategies that we are utilizing in our lesson plans, that we are using in our lesson plans? So it's it's not that uh, I have learned it this way by my uh, in my school, that's what I'm going to adopt. Come to the class, there are about 40, 40 minutes, I just give my lecture, you understand, you don't understand, it doesn't make any difference to me, 40 minutes over. The next I'm going to continue in my next class and walk out. Is that what we are doing? Because that is what my teacher has done. No, it's, it's like a doctor saying, again, I come back to a surgeon. Because how critical it is, I'm using the surgeons. So it's as critical as that. You are, you are, if a surgeon is he's doing that operation, it's very critical. We are also handling a human mind, a small child. It's also as critical. It's, it's a namana. Okay? Uh, if you treat that way, it makes a lot of difference. A, a parent comes and leaves the child to you in your hands and says, okay, take this. And the entire uh, uh, job of imparting knowledge is in, with you. It's you who have to do it. So you are owning it up. You say, yes, we, we are, the parent pays you a price for it and you are going to deliver that. You are making that a small child who is three years, four years, if, if, if the child stays with you for 13 years and that he goes out in the, at the age of 16, 17, so what does he go out as? What does he become? Does he become the best doctor? Does he become a good engineer? Does he, what does he, that, that's, that's what you are supposed to do and the parent is prizing. And you cannot get away with saying that the child is not good, the parent is the home and one. You can't get away. You have a role to play there. Okay. So if a doctor says that, you know, my, my teacher, when I used to go to medical you know, institute when I was studying, he used to do operation or whatever by cutting. And today, if, if there is laser, you know, all computerized, he cannot say, I will do that cutting again. But that's modern technology is use the computerization, make the life of the patient very easy. So we cannot go back and say that this is what my, my, my teacher has done and just go up and say that, yeah, this is the right way. You have to use the modern technology. The whole world has changed. If you have not changed, it's a big mistake with you. So what you need to do is 
get the correct taxonomy are you using blooms that's that's a great that's a great strategy are you using marsanos are you using multiple intelligence what are you incorporating is just that you are creating that the documents for the sake of it going just giving and coming back are you handling any activities is there any student engagement happening in your in your classes what is the what is the percentage of engagement happening in that 40 minutes is that is it is it 20 minutes is it 30 minutes or is it just 5 minutes or nothing happening it makes lot of difference the whole teaching world is changed if you have not then it you are already delayed you need to use some kind of strategy when you are doing and as per that strategy start building your your lesson plans and your activities your engagements your intervention programs all this has to be very neatly nicely done okay it, it cannot be just for sake of it and allow and, and give it the mercy of the teacher she herself designs the lesson plan she herself goes delivers and no tracking mechanism that's not the true way of implementing a lesson plan as we well don't have it okay so if if you are uh, in in for example if your purpose is in in developing a lesson plan if your purpose is just to uh, have the remembering of the, the lowest part of blooms and we brought to learning at does your lesson plan take care of it or does it go beyond that does it also go towards the understanding level does it also go to the applying level you need to have that in mind the teacher has to be trained how she has to effectively do it how she has to incorporate this into her uh, teaching learning into her classroom how she has to build activities on that do we or, or okay there are this another thing called there are enough uh, more than 10 Overall, 140 different types of strategies are there. Okay, if you really go searching, most popular. If you could implement one of these three, which I suggest is the first one is the blooms. It's very good. Second, if you can take care of multiple intelligence, if you have heard Howard Gardner's, he's done that. Eight is divided the entire learners into into actually nine. Okay, leaving out the spiritual aspect, it is eight. And in that also, if you leave out the music as part of your Islamic, then it becomes seven. is it part of the seven are they, are, are they taking all those intelligences or the smartnesses is it getting into your activities how many of them are you are able to do it so is are you creating that interest in that student are you able to excite that student to get into that activity so believe me what happens any any uh, even i know you uh, as teachers would have lot of role, one or two role models as a teacher because whenever i've done a survey i've seen if i ask who is your role model one of the role models always has been a teacher okay and if you really see that teacher is actually done something which very great so for example in in my career as i i for me totally it, it took 20 Uh, 22 years of my uh, education. In that, maybe I have undergone more than 400 teachers. More, more than 400 were actually taught me in that 22. Only two teachers come out whom I can really even in most of the seminars I tell that one teacher was was a history teacher in my eighth. Okay, another was my uh, maths teacher in my second year engineering. Okay, these two people have actually made a lot of difference in in me. Okay. I I always recollect them. So that history teacher, she used to come. Even even our school had lesson plans. So that history teacher used to come. She used to stand behind the uh, chair. She used to take the chair. I still remember her style. She used to turn it around and stand. And all the history, the chapters, the lessons, she used to teach like a story, like a fairy tale story. Okay. And whenever that uh, year comes, like for example. Uh, 1857 was the first, uh, you know, war of independence. So whenever they, she used to make us repeat that, okay. And believe me, she was my history teacher for eighth, ninth, and tenth. We never used to study history for our exams. Even the board exam, we never studied history. It was like for us, we'll anyway go and write. So that is the way she engaged with us. That is the way she trained, okay. And the second one was the maths teacher. He used to sit at the at the back and. Uh, Put the problem, problem on the the first line, and all the formulas on the right hand, and used to make us go and write one by one. Do always teachers ask me, okay, so if if I have to be a good teacher, how should I be? Should I be very soft? Should I be very caring? I said no. What you need to only be is fair. 
So these two teachers who I have in my life were the toughest teachers. They were, they were very strict teachers. And to an extent that my match teacher, whenever someone goes on the board and writes, and if it is a wrong answer, he used to literally throw dust, dusters. You know, the dusters were uh, wooden dusters. He was so harsh. And he never used to speak to us after the uh, college hours. So strict. So it doesn't matter. See, what you require is that that uh, conviction while you are while you are teaching. The students can see. Even now, first grade, my daughter who is in the second, first grade, she comes to me and says, Papa, I, that teacher doesn't like me. Okay, whatever, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that she's true. But the, the small child of five years can make out whether the teacher likes or dislikes that particular child. So today, this generation is even more you know, smart rather than ours. So don't don't fool yourself, uh, you know. And even to an extent that my my son comes and says, that teacher is good and this teacher is not good. That teacher teaches well and this teacher doesn't teach well because I don't understand. Okay. So you can't fool with your students by doing anything and you know th making them feel that yes they have understood or they like me or they, they, they I mean they are the very good ones. That's not the way to handle students. So. In a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is, when I look back to these two teachers, they actually went, if, if I compare them with Blooms, they were actually doing the sixth level to us. They themselves wouldn't have got training Blooms, okay? Bloom is very recent. So, but they knew they had created that art of teaching in their own way. They were very experienced, of course, yes. So, but they created, so today we have that scientific people who can come and tell you all you have, go to Google and find out what is the right way to do. So you'll get enough, you've got Pinterest, you've got a lot of websites, you've got Khan Academy, you have many, if you want to create a, a activities, you can easily do it. Gone are the days where teacher himself had to do. Today you don't have to do, take all those activities, incorporate, oh my two minutes left. Okay, so I'll quickly go on, uh, I'll, I'll finish my uh, two minutes. Uh, the next important thing is the time management. Mismanaging the time, what I say is like mismanaging your shirt. If, you're, if your size is 40, size 40 inch, what, how will it look if you, if you do a 50 minutes, if you, if you wear a 50 uh, inch size? Same thing happens if you're deriving, if you're designing a lesson plan for 40 minutes and you give 50 minutes to him to do. So it's, it's not worth it, it's very unproductive or, or a 40 minute, 40 inch, you know, I'm wearing a 30 inch shirt. So it's the same way, you're squeezing too much. So time is of very, very big essence here. Uh, what, uh, what, is, what is a topic and what activity you're deploying? All has to be very clearly uh, keeping time in mind. Um, how do you prioritize that? How can a teacher who is designing a lesson plan, if you can, if you make mistakes there, then it will be very difficult. So here, uh, priority is whether you have to spend that five minutes to make an announcement. Is it required for that lesson for when, when you are taking it? So there is an annual day and you have to wear this, this, this thing. Can it be done some other time? Our attendance is very important. Can it be done while activity is happening? So this is how we, how the priority has to be done and. All that cannot be anyway well laid out in the lesson plan, but somewhere this, this training has to be given to a teacher. How to organize the resources if you have to take some A's, you know, smart class, or you have to take some instruments, how to organize that, where is it available? So they don't, they don't go sit in the class and then start searching, send some student to get it from the staff room. Time wasting thing, discussing about, you know, Okay, you people went out for trip last time, you know, what was it, what was the experience? That is not to be discussed in your class, that's the 40 minutes that you have. Or, and the lastly is forming good habits of continuous uh, improvement. If you don't have that continuous improvement in your, in your lesson plan, then it cannot be, next year it cannot be used as effectively. So, you should have all these right. If you do not do it, then you will not have a proper uh, uh, lesson plan. Okay, there are four types of uh, uh, time that we can uh, divide it, which you should know. One is the allotted time, 40 minutes or 30. Best is the 40 minutes. If your people are doing 35 minutes, please make it 40. Uh, as per my research that I have done. And, uh, okay. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll wind up with this. Allo allocated time, you should know that 40 minutes. Second is the instructional time. Of, for, for example, five minutes goes in, in attendance and you have got 35 minutes left. What is the instructional time? What is the engagement time? Of, what is the time of activity that you have? And the very important thing is here is the academic learning time. 
what is the time that the child actually is participated in that 40 minutes? Okay, so these all have to be kept in mind while you are designing a lesson plan. I'll just wind up by by going to this few points of not following as per the documented lesson plan. Okay, you have a documented plan laid, laid out by the child, but well, you're not able to do it. Uh, lack of preparation, uh, too much of content than time available. Uh, going too fast or going too slow. There's no assessment in that uh, in that piece of your lesson plan. Uh, you have a lesson plan, you have a learning outcome. How do you connect that? How do you connect that objective? So you should have that assessment very neatly done. So these are all the couple of things I can go on. Uh, but I open for questions. Okay, I, I think I'll cover the rest part in the questions that you asked. <laughs> Are perfect lesson plans such a vital tool in the hands of a teacher? Okay, history teacher mine too uh, was favorite Krishnamurti. Okay. The math sir, uh, and then says so students with chalks. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, okay. 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 It can uh, go as much as 35 minutes, okay. Uh, I've seen in uh, various countries this happening. Uh, because the span of attention of a child today is, I was told, I, I am not certified yet, is not seven minutes anymore, which was the normal trend is two minutes. Okay, now the current generation. I have not gone and found out the real, but that's what I happen to understand, okay, it's two minutes. So in that, that he very quickly distracts, so you have to get it back again and again. That's a teacher's challenge. So overall, if you want to cover your CBSC curriculum, your overall keeping this in mind, okay, uh, or or uh, ICSC curriculum, uh, or board wise, any good board, uh, it is divided into number of. So approximately, if you take 40, 40 classes in term one and 40 classes in term two, and try to put all that. <laughs> syllabus into it, we have arrived at 40 minutes as a good, uh, good time for you. And again, keeping in mind the span of attention, keeping in mind that 50% of that class would be for activity. That is at least 20 minutes is for activity, at least. There's a lot of talk happening about Finnish school and so on. What is their practice then? Uh, Finnish, yeah, I've been there, I stayed there. I've all, we had led a delegation to find out what exactly is happening there. Beautiful, but we cannot compare that. There are a lot of schools in the country who are actually replicating it. To me, it, I, I, I'm, till date, I've not seen a successful school. Yes, maybe after five years, I'll be able to say it's really been successful. Seeing that I'm watching those schools which are actually doing in it like in, in, in India. But the problem part here is if I compare the, the, the basic part is a curriculum. Okay, we cannot compare our curriculum which has much too many contents to, to fill in. So let me, there itself we stop. Let me not talk about much more than that. So what we teach, even if we take CBSE or IGC, is much, much, much more content than what they are doing in Finland. But Finland is too less. Any other questions from the sisters? OK, so many hands up. Uh, no, my mic is fast. I'll come to you. One minute, one, one. Someone can have some mic, right? States like Goa is a very good state, the government schools are very good. Uh, Kerala is a very good state, and, and those are the exceptions. But overall, they have Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan, Madhya Shiksha Abhiyan, they are doing a lot of training, excellent teachers. Uh, they, there's a joke in the, on, in the in the Facebook where uh, government schools are very downtrodden and the teachers are in you know, buildings, bungalows, 
whereas the other side is private. So let us not talk about it. Let us only focus on private. So no point talking about the government. That's a different thing altogether. Okay. Let us talk about, about our children, how to train our children, how to derive the lesson plans. You have a question there? Okay. Brother, yeah? okay, there's a question there. Right. How do you cater to the different learning styles through one lesson plan? Oh, it's very easy. Your activity should be like that. You should have built that in, in one activity to take care of that particular lesson. So we have different learners in class, like no. how do you... Which one do you use? You use MI. MI. You yes. use MI, yes. it's very easy. You can develop all eight MIs in one activity. Okay. But your, 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 your teacher should be so creative enough. I have lesson plans, beautiful lesson plans. Okay. Which have all eight in my it. I I have seen teachers doing it. Okay. Okay. So it's not Thank it's not a particular thing. Thank you. Thank you. The brother out here. No. One more. There are a lot of adequate lesson plans available for each and every subject. So. Yeah, you can use them. Can you know your opinion about? Yeah, you can use them as long as they cover the requisite thing about. They should be an assessment, of course, yes. Uh, per lesson plan and link to the learning outcome. So if they are given that, you can always use it. doesn't need, I mean, it's not mandatory that your teachers themselves have to do it. If you can get ready-made, well-designed and please use that. That, that. But you should train your teachers equally. Without training your teachers, you cannot uh, deploy those lesson plans. Okay, one last question. Time just for one last question. Anyone? Uh, as my sister said about the government is work, okay. Our school is an aided school, not a government school. It's not a fashion to pay attention for four students. How to upgrade? How to? How to upgrade the school? How to upgrade? Yeah. They, they, they cater mostly to four students. Uh -huh. How to it's upgrade? It's an aided school. Upgrade what? I don't understand. What do you the know? quality of education is not up to the mark. Okay. The reason is the staff they are getting salaries from the government. We can't bring control. Uh, I don't know about your school. Okay, if, if you really want me to talk about aided and government, this, the reason here is, which I didn't want to discuss, of course, is does the government have control over the teachers? Okay, Do we have teachers who just come to the school, they are not bothered whether they are teaching, not teaching, whether the students are understanding, not as well, whether their assessments are linked to their performance. If that is the case, it's very difficult. That motivation level is different. We need to get a spiritual or someone to connect that. Here I'm only talking about the system or how the lesson plans can be more effective. So if your lesson plans have learning outcomes and that learning outcome is linked to the teacher's performance, okay, that's when it becomes very effective. So uh, if you have an appraisal system, not for only to make a comparison of the teachers, that's where I have seen lesson plans being very effective. Okay, a teacher a teacher is rated based on how many good performers in a class are, how the outcome has happened, has she been able to complete her chapters. So if these are your appraisal, if you have an appraisal, okay, even if you don't have an appraisal, if you have a correct mechanism of finding who is a bad teacher, who is a good teacher through your lesson plans and call that teacher who is not doing well, either give them a reprimand or second level of training and make sure that they come to that level, then your lesson plans become effective. Okay, now if it is aided one, if you have no control over the teachers, it's a different thing. I mean, you need to have that soft skill training, you know, motivation, attitude training, and make them come, charge them every time. So that would be the charging mechanism. Now see, I am coming from Goa. In Goa, incidentally, there are 400 schools. In that, only 70 are government schools. And 450 are aided schools. Only 20 are, uh, less than 20 are private schools. Now, aided schools are doing wonderful job. This that's the reason there's no scope for private schools there. That only they have 20. Of course, fees is restricted, but even otherwise, even government private schools are good. They are too good. It's only catering to elite. Now, what is happening in the aided here in different from Karnataka? Okay, in Goa is it is linked to the performance of rising. The the this one the child's performance is linked to the performance of rising. So a teacher is uh, uh, motivated to do. Okay, for their promotion, for their effect, uh, for their um, incentives. So if we can link them, yes, if it is educational uh, for aided and uh, government. If it is not linked, then I mean we need a different trainer to really boost their attitude and motivation.
Mark will affect the Sameer for that. MashaAllah, there's so much of uh, uh, depth and learning in that. And inshallah, we'll have you more in the, in the future sessions. A few points if you missed out, we'll cover that inshallah. In that, you can ask more questions there.